So Roblox has released something called Ban API, and it has two pretty major features. One of them is an alt account detection, which allows you to ban alt accounts from a specified user, and also a ban history. So I'm just going to go over these things, but as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, and also check out my UGC items, but let's get into the video. So there is this post saying introducing the ban API and alt account detection made by Roblox on the dev forum, where they've made a statement saying that they said it's challenging to moderate repeat offenders within your experience. And they've said in February that they are working on a tool to support your ability to moderate your experience. And the features of this ban API, like I said, one of them is the real-time alternative account detection. So when you ban a user, suspected alt accounts are also going to get banned in real time. And I've already saw few people talk about this, that it's really easy to avoid this by for example using a VPN, but an average user or an exploiter isn't really going to do that anyways. Then there is the history overview, where you can see the moderation history of a user you banned from your experience. Then there is the customizable bans, where you can determine the reason and duration of the ban, as long as it follows Roblox's community standards and terms of use. And there is also the configuration via engine, or the Open Cloud API. And the Open Cloud API is a set of resources and methods that lets you basically just build tools and applications that have access to Roblox's resources with the standard web APIs. So this is for something if you, for example, were building a web application maybe something to work with a Discord bot, and so on. So that's the features of the BAN API right now. And later in fall, Roblox is looking forward to providing the BAN API on Creator Hub, which I'm guessing that if you, for example, have a game, right, let me just go to the Creator Hub. If I go to one of my games, for example, this time character playground demo, which I'm also going to notice for a second that this is uncopy locked and you can get the same character from there, which is also an UGC. But anyways, so Roblox saying that they are going to bring the ban API to the creator hub is I'm guessing going to be an option somewhere in the maybe monitoring. So you could, for example, ban players from this page right here. Later they are just saying that this ban API is just an improvement to the kick API, saying that the kick API will remain active to avoid unnecessary adjustments. However, we recommend performing all of your account actions through the ban API, if this is your first time setting up an API. And now you will be allowed to establish your own experience rules and moderate your own experience according to those rules. And then as a reminder, you have a control over your own appeals and can choose to unban the user if they appeal to you. So this is just like a good system to actually just appeal the ban, right? If you for example just had a family member on a PC that you were also playing on and then they install some kind of an exploit, some kind of a cheat and they are using that cheat in game and then got banned the ban API system, if you are logged in on the same browser let's say could mistakenly ban you with the family member and there is also the engine and the open cloud documentation as well as some frequently asked questions which I'm not going to go over here so now to go through the documentation, now you have a ban async method, which is a method from the player service. And it allows you to easily ban users who violate your experience's guidelines. And this method also needs some kind of a config, where you need to pass all of this different stuff from here, like the display reason, the apply to universe, the exclude alt accounts, as well as the duration and also the private reason. So all of these paragraphs basically explain everything step by step and what different stuff does, but if you scroll down there is going to be the parameters of the config dictionary. And this config is basically a table, where you need to pass the user IDs and you can ban from 1 to 50 players, then the apply to universe, which propagates the ban to all places in the universe. And what this exactly means, if you for example were in studio and this was your main place. For example, this could be a place that was like a lobby and then later on you would have the places and a new place and this place would be like a map that the gameplay was happening on or maybe like a different RPG world. You could basically choose to only ban the player within that place by setting the apply to universe to false. Because if it's true, then the player is going to be banned from all of the places universe. Then there is the duration, which is the duration of the ban in seconds, and permanent bans are minus one, and also zero, and all other negative values are invalid. Then there is the display reason, which is going to be the message that displays after the player is trying to join the experience after they were banned. And the private reason, which is an internal messaging that will be returned while querying the user's ban history. So the display reason is displayed to the player and the private reason is only saved to the ban's API. And of course there is the exclude alt accounts, that when set to true, Roblox does not attempt to ban the alt accounts. Then after the parameters you're going to have the code samples. Which is exactly how the ban function should basically look like. 
but I'm going to go over this in studio now. And let's for example just make a brick that is going to ban you after you basically just step on it. So I'm just going to add a part, then just change its transparency and maybe make it red and just disable its collision. Then I'm just going to quickly add a script into the part and then just use the touched event. So right now I have a reference to the part and I will also need a reference to the player service. And now I can make a local function called ban player. And then I can connect this function to the part touched event. And then I will also need to get the player from the touched part. And here I'm just going to print the player name to basically just check if this code runs properly. And it does. And I'm just going to do a little check so it's not going to connect every time I basically just touch the part. Because I want to check if the latest player is also different than the player. Then in the ban player function, I can use all of these different methods like for example the ban history. Which I get from the get ban history async method. From the player that user ID. Then I can just for example print it out. And right now it's going to say HTTP 403 forbidden. Well this isn't really going to work right now because I am in studio. But for now I can basically just make the config that I'm going to pass in the ban async method. And this config type is going to be the ban config type. Which gets the user IDs. Which for now I'm just going to set the player that user ID. Then the duration. Which I can set to like 600 seconds which is basically going to be 10 minutes, then the display reason, which I'm going to just leave at full, and then a private reason, which I'm going to leave at bar. Then the next one is the exclude alt accounts, which I'm going to set to true, and then apply to universe, which I'm also going to set to true. So right now this config is going to ban the player for the duration of 10 minutes, and it's not going to ban their alt accounts, but it's going to ban them from all of the places within the experience. So after getting the config, I need to do a protected call on the ban async method. So I just do ban async from the player service and then pass in the config. And then if it succeeded, then I just want to set the latest player to be the player, like this. So right now if I step on it, and actually don't forget to comment this line, if I step on it right now, it's saying that ban async will succeed on production game servers skipping requests in the test environment. So right now it's not going to work in studio and I need to actually publish this game to Roblox. So instead of banning myself for 10 minutes, I'm just going to ban myself for one. So this is me in the live game now and I'm just going to step on this brick. And then it said you are here from this experience saying foo. So if I try to rejoin it right now, it's just going to say you were banned from this experience by the creator for one minute. Here is a message from the creator, and then you just set foo again. So let's actually see the ban history pages, where the ban history pages is a table returned by the get ban history async method. There is the display reason, the private reason, the start time duration, the ban and the place ID. Okay, so the ban history just seems to be an instance that you can iterate over, and I try to pass it to the player and it will just display nil. So maybe this is something that can only be accessed from the server, and can be displayed to the local user. But for the last thing that I wanted to show, is for example how to unban a player. And it's as simple as using the unban async method. Very similar to the player ban async, this method also takes in a config dictionary. And the players that you want to unban, are just passed in the user IDs with also the apply to universe option. You can see that this config also has only two parameters, compared to the ban async that had all of these, except the apply to universe and the exclude add accounts were optional. And also don't forget that these values need to be the certain types. So the unban function should only look something like this. But yeah, that is basically going to be everything for today. So again, go check out my UGCs, hope everyone had a nice day and see ya guys.